the goodness of fit test. In this type of test, you determine whether data fit a particular distribution or not. The null hypothesis is that they fit the particular distribution. The alternative is simply that the data do not fit the distribution. The distribution may be a uniform distribution. In other words, all of the events have an equal likelihood or probability. Or the distribution may be a distribution where particular percentages are given. In either case, we compare the expected number for particular events to the actual numbers observed for those events. The test statistic for a goodness of fit test is the summation for the k different events of the observed number minus the expected number, that quantity squared, divided by the expected number. An example of a goodness of fit test in which you are trying to determine if the data fit a uniform distribution would be examples such as the following. Here we're given a table of days of the week in which subjects identified the day of the week they thought was the best day for quality family time. Here's another example where the number of births recorded on the seven days of the week at a particular hospital are given, and we're asked to determine if these numbers of births on each given day represents a uniform distribution. Here we're given different flavors of ice cream, and people are asked to indicate their favorite flavor. And we're asked to determine if there is a preference in people's ice cream flavor or are all ice cream flavors equally preferred. Other goodness of fit questions ask if the results in observed frequencies are different from the frequencies of some distribution given by percentages. For example, here is such a question which asks whether or not the leading digits in a particular sample follows Benford's law of the distribution of leading digits, which is given by the frequencies in this table. In this problem, we're asked to compare the observed frequencies of people's preference in car color to the the past preferences of people's preference for car color given again by percentages. Here we have an interesting application of the goodness of fit test where we're asked to determine if there seems to be racial prejudice in selecting jury members. The table below represents 275 jurors in a city who were asked to identify their racial group, and the second row of numbers in the table represent those numbers by race in the city's juries. The numbers in the first row represent the percentages of registered voters in this particular city. And the question then is, do the numbers of jurors by race fit the numbers that one would expect given the racial distribution of this city as represented? by the percentages of eligible voters by race. In doing this problem on the T83, the first step will be to put the observed frequencies for the different racial groups into list 1. We would like list 2 to be the expected numbers that one would find from the total of 275 jurors if indeed the jury selection followed the distribution of the racial makeup of this city. One way of doing that would be to put the percentages as given into list 3 as decimals. After doing that, we can formulate list 2, and to do that, we move the cursor to the title for list 2, and list 2 will be 275 times list 3. And that then gives us the expected numbers that we would find if the jury selection in this city is representative of the population. Since I'm finished using list 3, we can clear list 3 by hitting clear and then enter. List 3 will now be formulated by putting the cursor on the title for list 3, and we will follow the equation for the test statistic in the chi-squared distribution, first using a parentheses, then the observed frequencies, list 1, minus the expected frequencies, list 2, close the parentheses, square that quantity and now divide by the expected frequencies list 2. When we hit enter, we now have the contribution to the test statistic from each one of the different categories of race. We can now come to the bottom of list 3. We would like to know the sum of the numbers in list 3. 
And to do that, we'll go to the list menu by using second function list over the stop button, then go to the math menu and hit number five, sum. And we want the sum of the numbers in list three, so therefore second L3 and hit enter. And we see the number 100.34. To find the p-value of this goodness of fit hypothesis test, we will now go to the distribution button and select number 7, the chi-squared CDF. The input into the chi-squared CDF will be the test statistic, which is 100.34, followed by E99, which is the calculator's understanding of infinity, then a comma, and now the degrees of freedom, which is one minus the number of pairs, which is in this case four minus one or three, and then hit enter. The output is one times 10 to the negative 21st, or one E negative 21, which is a decimal point with 20 zeros followed by the number one. So our output, which is the P value, is zero. The output of the p-value equaling zero tells us that we reject the null hypothesis. By rejecting the null hypothesis, it means that we are rejecting the claim that the numbers of jurors by race is representative of the population of the racial diversity in this city. In other words, there appears to be some racial bias in selecting jurors in this particular city. And I think you can agree that this is a very interesting and important use of the goodness of fit hypothesis test.